Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be just a real quick tutorial to show you how to expand the storage in your QNAP NAS. I recently got a Western Digital Red Drive. I want to add that to my existing storage pool and give myself some more free space. And I thought I'd walk you through that process. It's actually pretty simple, little time consuming, but not difficult at all. Now, the first thing we need to do is add the new hard drive and you don't need to shut your NAS down for this. All you need to do is just take out one of the existing bays. Then you're going to use some screws to attach the drive to that bay sled and then just stick it right back in. Make sure that you lock it in place. Then your NAS is going to go and initialize that drive and make it available for us to use. And for that part, we're going to jump onto the computer. Okay, so the hard drive's all installed and we're on the interface of the QNAP NAS. Now, the first thing that I want to do is go to storage and snapshots. And then I'm going to go to disks and just make sure that it's showing up in here. So we can see the three disks I have that are part of my existing array. And then this fourth disk that we need to add to the array. Now, the way we're going to do that is just go into storage and snapshots, click on whatever storage pool you want to expand. In my case, I only have this one. So I'm just going to click on that and go to manage. So here it shows us the our existing pool, how big it is, how much space we're using, all that good stuff. And we want to expand this. So we're going to go to expand pool and then select expand pool from the drop down. Now we have two options here. If we added multiple disks, we can create a brand new RAID group. But what we want to do here is just expand the one that we have already. So we're going to add new disks to an existing RAID group. We're going to select our RAID group. In my case, I only have one. You can see there's three disks that are attached to it. And then we're going to hit next. Now in this screen, this shows us the disks that we have available to add to our pool. And again, we can see the size of our pool down here is 7.26 terabytes. I'm going to select this one. This is the only one we have available. This is the disk we just added. So I click that and you can see it's going to increase our space to 10.89 terabytes. Now this is a four terabyte drive, but as always, you don't get all that four terabyte. Some of it's used uh, with the file system and formatting and all that good stuff. So we get 3.64 terabytes. It's going to increase our capacity to 10.89 terabytes. So we're going to hit next. Just make sure that everything is looking good. We're going from 7.26 terabytes to 10.89. And we're going to hit expand. Now this is just saying that all of the data on the disk that we're adding is going to be erased. This is not going to erase the disk, the data that you have on your existing storage pool. It's only going to erase anything that might be on that drive that you're adding. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. OK, so at this point, it has calculated everything it needs and it's going to get ready to start the uh, expanding the pool. It says, please wait until the pool expansion task has finished before expanding a volume or LUN in the pool. So you can still use your data. You can still access your data that's on the NAS, but it's saying don't make any changes to anything until this is complete. Now, this is the part that's going to take a while. It's calculating everything it needs right now. You could hear it in the background, probably. Uh, it's getting ready to start that. And we can see it's going to take about 30 hours to complete. So this is going to take more than a day to complete this expansion. So obviously, I'm going to stop the video here. And then I'll come back in you know, another day and a half here and show you what happens after this expansion is done. All right, so here we are back on the next day, and this actually took less than 24 hours for everything to complete. So if we go into storage and snapshots, click on the storage tab here, we can see that we now have 3.7 terabytes of space available. So we are good there. That's showing that the space was used by the pool, and we can verify that by going into storage and snapshots and seeing that our storage pool is now at 10.89 terabytes. Now, we can see that the storage pool is at 10.89, but the main volume is only at 6.94. That's because we haven't used that space uh, that we created in that pool. Now, in one pool, you can have multiple volumes. In my case, I only have one. So we just wanna add all of that to this one volume. So I'm gonna click on that. 
click on manage and then we can go into resize volume here click on that now since i want to use all that additional space i can just switch this to terabytes and click on set to max. If you had multiple volumes, might, you might wanna use part on this volume and part on another volume. So you can split that up however you want. I'm gonna set this to max. It's just telling me that it's, I've chosen to use all the space, but it's gonna reserve some space for system processing. So I'm gonna click okay on that. And you can see that it's gonna set the new capacity to 10.71 terabytes. So let's apply. And over here on the left, it just shows you the status. Now this is gonna take a little while, not nearly as long, it's not gonna take hours, we're talking minutes now, uh, but you just have to wait for this expansion to complete. So I'll come back when that's done. All right, and there we go, we are all complete and we can see that our free space is now 4.37 terabytes. So we're all expanded out we can see that the storage pool is 10.89 terabytes and the main volume is 10.62 and again the difference there is just because the system reserves some space for system tasks so at this point we're good to go and can use that space however we see fit so that's all there is to it. If you're running out of space on your QNAP NAS, you can very easily expand it by putting in one of these drives. I always recommend that you use a Western Digital Red or something similar as opposed to just a regular hard drive because you'll get a little more uh, data protection and longevity out of those drives. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section below. If you found this useful or informative, please hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.